And we're going to begin with Libya. The leader there, Muammar Gaddafi, is dead. After 42 years in power and eight U.S. presidents, in the end, the Libyan dictator was pulled from a drainage pipe and executed by his own people. The White House believes the death of the dictator, Ronald Reagan once called the mad dog of the Middle East, vindicates Obama's intervention in the country and his larger foreign policy approach, where the president put limits on U.S. military engagement and let a coalition of international partners in NATO take the lead. There's no doubt that uh, we did what, exactly what we said we were going to do. Uh, and I think it underscores the capacity of us to work together as an international community. So I'm very proud of the work that we did on this uh, operation. Yesterday in the Rose Garden, the president talked about what the White House sees as the foreign policy victories of the last six months. We see the strength of American leadership across the world. We've taken out al-Qaeda leaders, and we've put them on the path to defeat. We're winding down the war in Iraq and have begun a transition in Afghanistan. And now working in Libya with friends and allies, we've demonstrated what collective action can achieve in the 21st century. In New Hampshire, Vice President Biden made a point about the mission's low cost in dollars and U.S. casualties, an implicit comparison to the war in Iraq. The people of Libya have gotten rid of a dictator of 40 years who I personally knew. This is one tough, not-so-nice guy. In this case, America spent $2 billion total and didn't lose a single life. The White House was surprised and frustrated at how few Republicans were willing to give the president credit for Gaddafi's death. The Hawks in the Republican Party thought he didn't go far enough and fast enough. The isolationists publicly wondered why the U.S. was in Libya in the first place. Any praise the president did get came with a bunch of caveats. Here's Senator John McCain on the Today Show this morning. I give the president and the administration credit. The fact is that we could have ended this conflict a lot earlier if we had used the full weight of U.S. air power instead of leading from behind, and we wouldn't have the 30,000 wounded and thousands, uh, hundreds, if not thousands, who are killed. I noticed a comparison. Go get some of the Democratic press releases during Saddam Hussein's death right after that. Get some of the Republican press releases yesterday after Gaddafi. There's a phrase that they have in common. The world is a better place without. And then insert Saddam's name or insert Gaddafi's name. Apparently that is how you word a release when you're not sure where you stand on the issue itself. Now, with just 74 days to go until the Iowa caucuses, Mitt Romney was back in the Hawkeye State yesterday for the first time since August. He held events in Sioux City, Trainer, and Council Bluffs, western part of Iowa, big Republican area. Though he has just four full-time staffers in the state, Romney is leading in our recent NBC News Marist poll of likely Republican caucus goers. We wondered how aggressively Romney will compete there, and yesterday he gave us an answer. Sort of. I want to get the support of Iowans, and I will be here again and again uh, campaigning here. I, I want to get the support of the good people in Iowa. Uh, I'd love to win in Iowa. And he also added he knows he's not going to win everywhere. He's got some advisors that are telling him Iowa's a trap. You go there, it's very difficult to win. It's going to be a, a crowded field. Uh, the evangelical vote is going to come out, and you'll see the same thing that happened to you that happened uh, four years ago. And then if he goes in the first state, he competes, he loses. That could be a rocket booster for a Rick Perry, for instance. That said, it's high risk, high reward. He wins in Iowa, he wins in New Hampshire, and this thing is over. All right, finally, last night the Senate rejected the first standalone piece of the president's jobs bill, a $35 billion provision which would have provided aid to states and local governments to hire teachers and first responders. The bill failed 50 to 50. It needed 60 votes, with all 47 Senate Republicans voting against it, along with Democrats from Nebraska Bill Nelson and Arkansas Mark Pryor, plus the independent Democrat Joe Lieberman. In the White House response, we got the first look at what might be the president's message next week when he travels to California, Colorado, and Nevada for a West Coast swing. Quote, every American deserves an explanation as to why Republicans refuse to step up to the plate and do what's necessary to create jobs and grow the economy right now. 
that was here's what we know we know that the fact is that the president didn't get what he wanted here in congress it's setting up it's drawing the bright lines that he believes he needs to have right now which is to run against congressional republicans but you're seeing the discipline with the republican side on this looks like nothing is going to get passed much on this jobs bill